scripture this morning is from Amos 7, verses 7 through 15. <clears throat> this is what the Sovereign Lord showed me. He was preparing swarms of locusts after the king's share had been harvested and just as the second crop was coming up. When they had stripped the land clean, I cried out, Sovereign Lord, forgive, how can Jacob survive? He is so small. So the Lord relented. This will not happen, the Lord said. This is what the Sovereign Lord showed me. The Sovereign Lord was calling for judgment by fire. It dried up the great deep and devoured the land. And I cried out, Sovereign Lord, I beg you, stop. How can Jacob survive? He is so small. So the Lord relented. This will not happen either, the Sovereign Lord said. This is what he showed me. The Lord was standing by a wall that had been built true to plumb, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord asked me, What do you see, Amos? A plumb line, I replied. Then the Lord said, Look, I am setting a plumb line along my people Israel. I will spare them no longer. The high places of Isaac will be destroyed and the sanctuaries of Israel will be ruined. With my sword I will rise against the house of Jacob. Then, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent a message to Jeroboam, king of Israel. Amos is raising a conspiracy against you in every heart of Israel. The land cannot bear all his words. For this is what Amos is saying. Jeroboam will die by the sword, and Israel will surely go into exile, away from their native land. Then Amaziah said to Amos, Get out, you seer. Go back to the land of Judah. Earn your bread there and do your prophesying there. Don't proph prophesy anymore at Bethel because this is the king's sanctuary and the temple of the kingdom. Amos answered, <coughs> Messiah, not Messiah, Amaziah. I was neither a prophet nor a prophet's son, but I was a shepherd and I also took care of sycamore fig trees. But the Lord took me from tending the flock and said to me, go prophesy to my people Israel. Here in this reading of God's holy word. And now. That's okay. So as we read in our scripture today, we find the prophet Amos in conversation with God. Now Amos is not a great prophet like Moses or Elijah, but his story and this interaction with God is a lesson that we can use for our own lives. You see, God tells Amos that he's going to be judging the nation of Israel. No longer are they simply the favored people to move forward that way. They will be judged. And he's going to set a plumb line for them to judge them. Now, if you're not familiar with a plumb line, it's a line or a cord that has a weight at one end, such as a plumb bob, and it's used to uh, especially determine verticality, so to make sure something is straight. Matt, did I define that correctly? <laughs> Thank you. He would know much better than I would. So, Amos was a common man. He was a pruner of trees by trade. So he would have been familiar with things like this. So God is telling Amos that he is going to be judging the nation of Israel by the standard that he has set for them. Now that standard for them would have been the laws that they had had since the time of Moses. And when Amos begins to tell the people about his vision, the response is not very popular. Now this is no surprise. Because whenever someone is told what they are doing is wrong, 
They tend to take it poorly. Think about it in your own life. How do you react when someone tries to correct you? I know for myself, it's something that I struggle with greatly. So when the priest decides to go to the king and tell him what Amos is speaking about and speaking against the king, it really comes as no surprise that the king and this other, uh, other person become upset. Now when he's confronted, Amos tells them, look, I am not a fancy prophet. I am not some high-ranking person. I'm just a simple man. But God has chosen me to deliver this message to the people of Israel and to you. And so I'm going to do, and I'm going to follow what God has told me to do. And you need to know that God is judging all of us in the same manner, that we are all being measured by that plumb line. So what do we take away from this? Oftentimes when we look at Old Testament prophets, we think to ourselves, wow, it's a great story, but how does that apply to us today? <clears throat> What is the plumb line that God is going to judge us by in these days? Well, as Christians, we need to look at Jesus to find our plumb line. Now, I have some great news for you. Our plumb line, the thing that we are measured against, is not Jesus himself. So what do I mean by that? We are not going to be measured against Jesus. And I thank God for that. Because there is no possible way that any of us could ever possibly measure up to Jesus Christ. If that was the standard that we were trying to reach, we would ultimately fail. Now, do not get me wrong. We are freed and from and forgiven of our sins by Jesus Christ. But we need to know that we could never hope to compare to Jesus. So, what are we to be measured by then? Well, if we look at the words of Jesus, we can do our best to live to the things that he has called us to do. We can look at his greatest commandment. Love God with all your heart, all your mind, and all your soul, and love your neighbor. There's a great song that's out there right now in contemporary Christian music. Um, maybe you've heard it. It's by Danny Goki, and the chorus goes like this, and it says this verse but in a very easy to understand way and it goes like this and i'm not going to sing it for you you got to keep it real simple bring everything back to ground zero because it all comes down to this love god and love people that's a very simple way of putting it love god and love people now brothers and sisters one of these things tends to be easier for us to do than the other, right? We are usually able to find ways to love God. Oh, we might argue with him. We might question him. And we might, in our weakness, find ourselves angry with him. But in general, we are able to find ways to love him. After all, he loved us so much that he sent his son to die for us. So when we consider that, it becomes easy for us to love God. Now, the second part, that is where we tend to struggle as people. How is it that we can love people? How is it that Jesus can expect us to love people in this world when we look around and we see how broken they are? Well, the first thing I will tell you is this. We all need to take a good long look in the mirror because brothers and sisters, we are broken people too. Next, we have to remember this. If we, if we are to have any chance of changing the world and doing our best to live up to those commandments, our best weapon in this world is to love those people. Recently, I saw a sign and I'm one of those people that tends to try to read them whenever I see them. And the sign said this, I love you. You're probably thinking, how can you love me? You don't even know me. Well, if people can hate for no reason, then I can love for no reason. What an amazing way to look at things in this world. 
Now you might be saying to yourself again, well, yeah, it's easy to love people when you don't know them. But if you knew the people that I knew, you would understand how hard it is to love them. Jesus calls us to love them anyways. Now this past week, I encountered someone that was hard to love. This person decided that my family was not good enough to talk to after having a short conversation with us. He simply turned and walked away without any further explanation. Now, I want to be honest with you, brothers and sisters. My initial reaction was not to love this person. My initial reaction was to get angry at them. And in fact, if I had heard some of the things that they had said that I found about, about later, I may have been more than angry. And about a day after this encounter, I found God working on my heart. I found him saying to me, you need to forgive them. And you need to find a way to love them. So I found myself then praying and asking God to forgive me of my own anger towards this person and to help me love them and to help that person love others as well. Now, I don't tell you this story so that you can say, I'm not here saying, oh, look at me, I'm so great. Look at how I overcame. That's not what I'm doing today. The point is this, I know that it is hard to love people, some people especially. And I know that I fail at times myself, but it doesn't change the fact that that is the plumb line of what we are being judged against. Forgiveness is one way to show love for people. And in reading this week, I came across a really good article by Michelle Bland. And in this article, she talked about other ways that we show love to people. So another way besides forgiveness that we show love is offering compassion. By simply caring for them in their time of need, we show love for other people. By meeting them where they are right now in their walk of life and walking beside them, no matter where that may be, and offering that gift of caring, that is how we show love. We show love for our neighbors as well by being in service to them by humbling ourselves and offering to help them. Showing them that we have, the love that we have for them is just not this theoretical idea of love everyone no matter what, but the idea of actually being in service and helping them. That is how we show love to them. So brothers and sisters, let us make sure that we are doing all that we can to ensure that we are doing our best to measure up to that plumb line, the one that Jesus has set for us, to love God with all our heart, all our mind, and all our soul, and to love our neighbors as well. So my challenges for you this week are these. What is one way, just one way, that you can show God that you love him? And I challenge you this week to show someone love, the love of God, by offering your forgiveness, your compassion, or of being in service to them. Amen.